when you, when you have a team built, you go acquire Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson, you know, like like the Patriots, like the Buccaneers did with a Tom Brady. They acquired a guy because the rest of the team around him was pretty damn good. The rest of the team outside of the defense inside of the ball for the Denver Broncos, they're not good with a new head coach that seems like he's lost out there a lot to me as he's calling plays and trying to figure things out. And Russell Wilson's just not seeing it clean. He's just not. I watched him in the first half, obviously. That first quarter, he was 10 for 10. He looked like, okay, he might be cooking here something up. But then the thing started, as the, as the game went on, he started to look different. He wasn't seeing it clean. I remember one time on third down, he wound up getting sacked. Guy runs a hook route overneath the ball. Now, first thing you're supposed to do, your eyes are supposed to scan from right to left. He never got all the way back to the left. He never got to the middle of the field. He stayed right by the time he even thought about getting to the middle of the field. It was right in front of him. He wound up getting sacked. And I don't know if that's just a – it's new to him. He's not processing it properly. I have no idea. None at all. But he just – he looks – he doesn't look good. I, I can tell you that. How many times are we going to see the Broncos lose games because they lack the ability to produce offense? Right? This is the third game this season for this team who is two and four where their defense has held their opponent to under 20 points and they have not been able to win. I don't know if Nathaniel Hackett is going to make it throughout the regular season. I don't. Because you're looking you at think he'll say, get his first year, he'll get fired before he, the season he, ends. He may get hacked. I mean, I, I would seriously consider it Jay, because what about- it seems like there's, there's continuity missing. And last night, to me, I felt like I saw a franchise quarterback. Now, Justin Herbert may have had, you know, 57 pass attempts and not scored a touchdown. But in overtime, third and 12, this dude rolled out with pressure coming his way, made a play that put them in position to score a field goal. And I, I know a special teams, a blunt blunder by them, right? Uh, the punt return that they kind of dropped and they fumbled, put them in position to do so for Denver. But it just feels like this always happens to Denver. And I know they're not down, not having Javante Murray. I don't know where Melvin Gordon was last night. I don't know how come he didn't well, get Keenan Allen's snaps. not there. That makes a big difference. Jay, what about what Key said about when you acquire a guy like Russell Wilson, it's when it's a, he's going to put you over the top. Whatever you think of Russell Wilson, he's better than what they had. But we had Mark Schlereth on this show tell us, who's watching it very closely in Denver, tell us even Aaron Rodgers wouldn't have put them over the top, right? So what about the fact that that they're just not where they thought they were? So for when you think about this for the Chargers, Pro Bowl center is out. Pro Bowl left tackle is out. Top wide receiver is out. And yet Justin Herbert finds a way to win it. The thing that they do, Russell Wilson, they should do with Russell Wilson is the same thing you do with every quarterback when you have a top-notch defense. There's a certain plan. You're going to run the ball. All I need my quarterback to do is be 17 to 23, 200 yards, and a touchdown. Run the football. Instead of trying to allow Russell Wilson to throw the ball all over the lot, and he didn't have that many attempts last night, but they never really got the running game going to a point where I always feel like you have to run the ball regardless of the yardage. Attempts are key. You attempt to run the football. Keep them honest. You got to keep Chew it, up the clock. You got to keep it honest yeah. and chew up the clock. Yeah. And I don't think Nathaniel Hackett has been able to do that in understanding Russell Wilson's success in Seattle was all predicated on them running the football and that defense playing good. Okay, this whole Russ Cook media fascination built it up as if he was the top-notch He's going to go 35 or 40 for 350 yards. That's just not him. Accept yeah, but, it. But just Keith, accept it. I'm not paying my quarterback $250 million well, you misevaluated what you had. to be Cooper Rush. No, I'm not about to, to be Cooper Co- Rush, what about You to misevaluated be, the situation. What about to be some version, even if it's a lesser version, of Matt Stafford last year in the sense that what Key is saying, like, so why spend all that resources, all those resources on a quarterback? Because if he has better talent than your average guy, and you do what Key says, you know, the 21 of 27, whatever it is, for 212 yards, two touchdowns, something like that, a touchdown, no picks, in the key moments of the game, the more talented quarterback can make that third down play, yeah, you're, you're, right? Yeah, absolutely. What about, like, that's, that's I agree with that based I, on what I've seen so far. I would agree with that, too. But uh, did you see the way Jared Judy and company were looking at him last night on the sideline? <laughs> this is this multiple <laughs> games now where I've seen teammates side-eyed. looking side-eyed. Yeah. Well, because when you when you come with a lot, Jay, 
and you come with a lot and you're doing a lot and everything, people can see that and sometimes it rubs individuals the wrong way. And he's not playing the best football right now. So they certainly are going to side-eye. Okay, Top I'll, recruit I'll, Jay Williams, if you come into Duke and you're not doing anything, guess what your teammates are going to do? But so then when I listened to a podcast the other day, Richard Sherman podcast, and he's talking to Marshawn Lynch, Marshawn Lynch, right? And Lynch is talking about, yo, if I can't call you directly, I don't have his I'm not rocking with you, Saw right? I, I, and then yeah. Richard Sherman's like, yeah, you have to go through his manager. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a teammate? Now, this is on a podcast. A teammate like, yo, call me, but let's connect through my manager. Like that's there's what no I have everyone do. I know that. You, but that's what happens with you and me. What's the difference? Yeah. Yeah, but my, my manager connects me directly to you on the three-way call. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.